the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. My dear sisters and brothers, I welcome you to the celebrations of the mysteries of our salvation of 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time, also known by the Universal Church as Vocation Sunday. I would also like to introduce to you Father Nicholas Mubanga. Father Nicholas Mubanga led us through the novena of the Sacred Heart. I'm also a bearer of good news about him. There's also good news about Father Nicholas Mubanga, which we received the day before yesterday. He just passed his bar exams across the street here at Zia. <laughs> Father Nicholas, congratulations. So the readings of 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time, also known as Vocation Sunday, invite us to reflect on our vocation, the vocation of discipleship. And we'll hear about the five stages of discipleship. There's the call, the invitation to follow Jesus. Then when we accept the call, Jesus himself trains us and prepares us for missioning as the second stage. Then there's the act of us being sent. After we spend some time with Jesus, Jesus himself sends us. And when he sends us, we come back to him, we report of our progress. And when we report of our progress, then he gives us feedback. Jesus gives us feedback, fraternal correction, and fraternal encouragement. And so for the many times that we have not been responsive to that invitation to discipleship, let us turn to God our Father and ask for pardon and mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins and iniquities, and bring us to life everlasting.
let us pray. O oh God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her, all you who love her. Rejoice with her in joy, all you who mourn over her, that you may suck and be satisfied with her consoling breath that you may think deeply with delight from the abundance of her glory. For that says the Lord, behold, I will extend prosperity to her like a river and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing stream. And you shall suck, you shall be carried upon her hip and fondled upon her knees as one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see, and your heart shall rejoice. Your bones shall flourish like the grass, and it shall be known that the hand of the Lord is with his servants. The word of the Lord. Your response to the responsible psalm is, cry out with joy to God, all the earth. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. O sing to the glory of his name. O render him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome your deeds. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. Before you, all the earth shall bow down, shall sing to you, sing to your name. Come and sing the works of God, awesome his deeds among the children of men. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river on foot. Let our joy then be in him. He rules forever by his might. Cry out with joy to God all the earth. Come and hear all who fear God. I will tell what he did for my soul. Blessed be God who did not reject my prayer, nor withhold from me his merciful love. Cry out with God to all the earth. The second reading, a reading from the from the letter to the Galatians. I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. Brethren, far be it from me to glory except in the cross of our Lord, Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. 
For neither circumcision counts for anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. Peace and mercy be upon all who walk by this rule, upon the Israel of God. Henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear the marks on my body of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brethren. Amen. The word of the Lord. Shall we rise for the first one? newsletter. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him two by two into every town and place where himself was about to come. And he said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way, behold, I send you out as lambs in the midst of hooves. Carry no pace, no bag, no sandals, and salute no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, face say, Peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace shall rest upon him. But if not, it shall return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide. For the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Wherever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But wherever you enter a town, and they do not receive you, go into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near you. I tell you, it shall be more tolerable on that day for Sodom than for that town. The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to trend upon serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. When the Lord calls you and I, we have only one duty to respond. And when we've responded, we are supposed to listen to the Lord. After listening to the Lord, we are supposed to adhere to his instructions. After adhering to the Lord's instructions, 
we are duty bound to go and execute the instructions according to him, not according to ourselves. And after favorably executing the instructions according to the Lord and the mandate from the Lord, we are supposed to return back to the Lord and give him feedback. What is expected from the Lord, perhaps even from ourselves, it's favorable feedback as the disciples are coming out, as they are returning to the Lord to give him nothing else but bubbling, exciting feedback to the Lord. This is how the sequence of life is supposed to be. Even our journey on earth, coming on earth, it's the same cycle. We are here to respond to God's call. We are here to adhere to God's instructions. We are here to execute God's instructions. And after our expeditions on earth, we are expected to get back. I had dinner with one couple, so I was telling the, the husband, reminding him, I was using grammar to say, when your wife dies, what type of a woman are you going to marry? The woman got very upset with me. So Father, you are wishing me death. You are supposed to use proper grammar if I was to die. No, it's not a possibility if you were to die. It's a matter of time when you will die. And then she started charging at the husband. So you will get married when I die. So you will get married. Even the marriage vows are very clear. Until death do us part. The problem she had, it's not about the faithfulness of the husband. The problem she had was not to think that one day she would die. And that's a huge mistake that we make as human persons. When the Lord has given us a gift of life, when the Lord has mandated us, he has instructed us, we get so confused such that we don't even package goods to go and give feedback, favorable feedback, to go and give back to the Lord. We get so swamped up with the wind of the earth. Some people cannot even come to church. Some people cannot even do charity. Some people would come so weird under this earth. It's a cycle that has to get back to the Lord. I've forewarned people, going back to the Lord when you look into John 14, it's for all of us, unless you choose otherwise. The kingdom of God belongs to all of us, unless somebody chooses otherwise. Unless you mess yourself up, unless you fail to adhere to the instructions of the Lord. From the first reading you've seen, God is speaking to Jeremiah. When Jeremiah was born, he was reminded, I knew you before you were born. Just carry on my instructions. I favored you before you were born. So this, the first reading of today from the book of Jeremiah, it is simply reminding us that God has been involved in our lives. And he will always be involved in our lives. God has always been wanting to journey with us. God has always been journeying with us. It's a choice we make not to journey with the Lord. Failure to listen to his instructions. And that should comfort us. When you look at the call of David, you are going to see even his father never favored him, but God favored him. He had favored the 11 of his children, but the Lord said, there is one more, bring him over. When he somehow insisted, David came over, and the Lord said, this is the chosen one from God. His own father never favored him, but the Lord had favored him from way, way back. That's why I tell people when you say, no, me, I'm cursed, no, me, I'm cursed. This case has been moving from generation to generation. I mean, come on. It's something that we can do within a twinkling of an eye. What comes from God, it's all goodness. 
God has never made trash. God has made only the best. In an event that you hallucinate in your mind with your family, you think in the way that you are not supposed to think properly, please come and see your priest and say, I think we have a case. Father is only going to tell you, this case can it move out of you. It's a question of reminding you that you are not born with a case, but you are born with blessings. We just mess ourselves up. The Lord, the Lord journeys with us from where we're back. When you go into the second reading, you are going to see Paul is speaking to the Galatians and is reminding them, I have been favored by the Lord. And Paul is very convinced he has been favored by the Lord. He knows his story with the Lord. He knows where he's coming from with the Lord. And that conviction must dawn in our hearts and in our minds. I've seen people going somewhere where they have been told, no, this case is from your ancestors, your ancestors, your ancestors, the prophet, they prophesy somewhere, somewhere there. How? You are a favored child of the Lord. That's why when you find yourself in mistakes every now and then, just sit down and organize your life. Don't blame everybody else. Just look at what you can do right as a person. Otherwise, you are a favored child of God. I met a mad person who was telling me, Father, I don't know where my lucky has gone. I reminded him, can you slow down? Take it easy. Let's go to the psychiatric and check yourself. Check your mental status. As we are talking today, is in sound mind and body. He was very convinced that he's been cursed by other people, and yet not. So we tap from Paul that we are favored children of God. From the gospel, it's a very exciting gospel. 72 have gone. The Lord has called 12. He's called more. He's called 72. Now sending them two by two. And they are coming back with a robust kind of response. Even the demons... Even this, even this, they are bubbling with confidence. And that's what the Lord waits for. Even after our Eucharistic celebration today, what the Lord is waiting for, what have you achieved from church at 10 hours today? What is it that you can talk about? What is it that has touched you? What is it that the Lord has favored you? You've got to bubble, you've got to walk out with confidence. As you age, you remember, even a jism is a sickness in itself. It's not that the Lord doesn't favor you. You are just getting out of age and take it easy. Some people as they are aging, they get so bitter with themselves because they wake up, the nails are paining, the ankles are paining from nowhere. They were not even playing soccer anywhere, but they wake up struggling every now and then. Take it easy. You've got a story to go and tell God. And you should know that each day that passes, it is taking us back to the Lord. We are cutting out one day, one day, one day, one day. But our memories should be increasing. This is what the 72 are doing. What is making the 72 get back? They have responded to God's call. And they have never missed the instructions. The Lord is telling them, amongst the instructions, is saying, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Don't run away from me. I'm increasing the numbers from 12 to 72. We continue increasing the numbers. The laborers are still few, but the harvest is plenty. And the disciples are saying, yes, Lord. The second instruction is giving them, don't go and say a lot of things. Go and tell them the kingdom of God is near. The sweetness of God is closer to you. The beauty part of the Lord is closer to you. We can hold on there. Even when you respond to God's call by giving birth to children, this is what you need to do. Remind the kids around you, you are in the presence of the kingdom of God is very near. Let them enjoy the environment. Let them not struggle much. Tell them the kingdom of God is near. As, as much as you befriend other people, tell them, welcome into my territory. 
The kingdom of God is near. Please come and sit next to me. The kingdom of God is near. You don't say much. And I've mentioned to people, we share not because we have, but because we want to communicate the kingdom of God. And in Bemba we say, masako. I don't know how to take it in English, but I can loosely translate it to say, the beauty of the chicken are in the feathers. As loosely as that. So you make God bigger and better when you preach the kingdom of God is near. And he's giving them other instructions. Carry nothing, my people. Carry nothing. Go as you are. You came with nothing on this earth. Why should you be stuck with what you are going to have on earth? Go and reach out. No, I can't do this because I don't have this. Some people saw me one time walking across the town. And the Father, is your vehicle dead? But why are you walking? And I reminded people, we were born walking. I went to the secondary school walking. So there's nothing fancy about it seeing me walking. I've seen the vehicles as an adult. It's because just the Lord does favor us. But where we are coming from, we've been walking. It's just the favor from the Lord. That's why when you have things you get stuck, get back to the original position. Listen to the instructions of the Lord. They are very elemental instructions. Carry nothing. No, I can't come to you. I have nothing to give you. I have nothing to give you. I can't accommodate people. They have nowhere to sleep. The rooms are... But you have a four-bedroom house. No, there's a kid there. There's, 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 a, there's a fluffy dog in that room. It's for the fluffy dog. Something like... Where we are coming from, we are even sleeping in the sitting room. Who are coming from nowhere? It's the Lord that is giving us these instructions. But exceptional instructions I've extracted too. I'm sending you as lambs among the wolves. The Lord is aware that it is very competitive. Even as you complain, be very careful. The Lord is very much aware. I'm sending you as lambs among the wolves. Why can't he take out wolves so that we can go clean away? The Lord is very much aware that as we go out to carry out the mission, it's very competitive. You are going to meet jealous people. You are going to meet selfish people. You are going to meet stingy people. This is what the Lord is saying. I'm forewarning you. I'm sending you as lambs among us wolves. Even as you struggle, even as you are beaten by your best friends, remember, these are the instructions from the Lord. The Lord is equally aware. That's why I've reminded people, when you struggle so much, can you please get back to the Lord? He's very much aware of your struggles. He's very much aware of your pain. Even when you suffer from sickness, that you feel you are not getting better. The Lord is very much aware of your suffering, of your sickness. That's why he's saying, I'm sending you as lambs amongst hooves. The second instruction is saying, it's not everybody who's going to smile with you. And dust and move on. And dust and get going. This is what the Lord is saying. It's very much our, it's not everybody who can be nice to you. I've been reminding people from time and again, time and again. You say hello to somebody, somebody does not, does not respond favorably. It's okay. You've done your part. Can you do it even tomorrow? Can you do it even another day? Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? Have a blessed day. Because you don't know the problems people have. And don't join into their problems. Just do your part, your beautiful part. I've wished him a good day. I've wished him a good night. He's not responding. She's not responding. It's okay. I've done my part. Keep going. Keep going. Don't join into the confusion. I also not greet him. I also not greet her. She didn't respond. Come on. You have a beautiful package. It's not about the other person. It's about you. Amen. I've told people wake up with a lot of moods. I've told them, can you get back to your room and control your mood? We all have moods. We are just managing ourselves. <laughs> and we've got to learn to manage ourselves. The Lord is saying it's very competitive. What is expected finally as you reach out to the mission, as you bring up children, as you manage people in your organization, you need to be very kind. This is what the Lord wants. 
You need to be very patient. Some people would listen to you. Some people, they cannot capture what you are saying within a twinkling of an eye. You need to be very patient with them. This is what is expected. What is our outlook? An expedition of joy. Don't go back to God and complain. Find something that you can go to say to God very nice. Beautiful things. I was telling people, God made one greatest mistake to give me life as a human person. And I'm very proud for such a mistake that he made. He breathed life into me. And I'm going to salute him. God, thank you so much for giving me life. The second thing that he has done loosely is to make me a priest, a chosen one, to live in his vineyard. And I'm going to salute him. God, thank you so much for making me into a priest, your holy priest, in persona Christi. That should be our outlook. What are you going to say to the Lord? As you are, package something beautiful to go and say to the Lord. Don't go and meet God sadly. It's not only you who has had pain, who has had difficulties. All of us, we have our own portion. Even the 72 have their own portion. The soldiers came into church like this and they grabbed the priest. They took the priest outside. Everybody was silent and they were shooting outside. They came back smeared with blood and stood in front. Who was listening to Father Simpasa? Who was listening to Father Simpas? People started making excuses. No, me, I was thinking, this is Ziare, that's why I tend to you. <laughs> Can you go out? He leaves. Another person, no, me, somebody has been troubling me to pay me back. That's why I came into church. I'm looking, I'm just here to look for, for, for somebody who owes me money. Okay, you are free. Can you go? No, my daughter dragged me. I'm from the village. So my daughter brought me here to say, let's go to St. Ignatius. I don't even know even how to pray. Oh, Mary. Oh, you are not lady. Can you go out? People made a lot of excuses. There were only a handful number of people who remained. The soldiers went back and brought back Father Simpasa with the chicken that they had killed to get some blood to smear themselves. <laughs> As you carry out the mission, be very diligent. Don't easily give up. Amen. The mission is the Lord's. The success of the mission depends on the Lord. Let us now turn to the Lord and profess our faith in him. I believe in one God. substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified and upon suspended. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He has ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. 
who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As missionaries of Christ, we turn to God, the Father of mercies, and make our needs known to him. In today's gospel, Jesus tells the disciples, he's sending them out like lambs among wolves. We pray for all missionaries who left family, friends, and communities to follow Christ's call and bring the message of salvation to far away regions of the world. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for a new spirit of mission in our church so that all its members work together to advance the reign of our divine Savior, the reign of truth and justice, the reign of love and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the poor and marginalized in our society that in their pain they may receive the spiritual material and social support they need from church and community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We remember those throughout the world who are suffering from human rights abuse and pray for a world that will respect the God-given rights of all, especially those who suffer from hatred, discrimination, poverty, and war. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Righteous Father, may our union with Jesus, your beloved Son, be pleasing to you, Lord God. And may your mercy sustain us always. We make our prayers through Christ our Lord.
Sacrifice might be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Thank you. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like they do for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Alec Banda, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and who have died in your mercy, who come them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, so we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, our most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coheirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we have the courage to say the prayer which our Lord himself taught us as we say, Our Father. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Together, let us pray for peace in our world. Peace in Central Europe. Peace in all the trouble spots of Africa. Peace in our communities. Peace in our homes. And peace in our hearts. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free us by this your most holy body and blood from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us always faithful to your commandments and never let us be parted from you. My dear sisters and brothers, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, 
May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O oh Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Good morning. The parish announcements. We extend a warm welcome to all our visitors to St. Ignatius Catholic Church in Lusaka. Please stand so that the Christian community might welcome you. You're welcome. We also wish those from out of town a pleasant stay in Lusaka. If you are here to stay, please get a registration form from the parish office. The COVID-19 mobile vaccination team is available at the parish office on Sundays from 08.30 to 14 hours. This exercise will be available on Sundays up until the 31st of July, 2022. The 8.15 choir is selling St. Ignatius Parish Chitenges at 100 kwacha only after every mass. In the parish office and at the entrance of the church, there are fundraising envelopes for Radio Maria Yatsani Voice. Let us contribute towards the sustainability of Radio Maria Yatsani as an instrument for the, new, for the new evangelization in the Archdiocese of Lusaka. And finally, there will be Father Joe Kinney's Memorial Mass on Saturday the 23rd of July 2022 at 10 hours. All parishioners are welcome. Father will make the marriage bans announcements. Marriage bans Las Mutarewaria and Dani Razme, Givens Chula and Marian Banda, Oris Musukwa and Caroline Kachaka, David Nelson Mumba and Sandra Nawa, Natasha Ntema and Chvaridaka, Samuel Sinkala and Samantha Konde, Samandevani Mukikundakitu and Leah Mumba. If there is anyone who knows as to why these cannot be married in church, he or she should see the parish priest in confidence but in truth. But let's remember to pray for them. Shall we rise for the blessing? We have received a letter from the provincial of the Captain Franciscan Order regarding joy of application. Announcement of bans for the priestly ordination of Brother Joel Mukuka Kapilikisha or FM Captain. Brother Joel Mukuka Kapilikisha, a deacon with the Captain Franciscan Order and the faithful of your parish wishes to be ordained a priest in the Catholic Church on Saturday, 6 August 2022, in Lusaka. He is the son of Mr. Joseph Kasonde Kapilikisha 
and Mrs. Teresa C. Kapirikesha. According to the demands of church law, if anyone knows the reason or reasons why he should not be ordained, please notify the parish priest. You are reminded to pray for him. Allow me also to thank Father Nicholas Mubanga for breaking the word with us and also permit me to thank him most sincerely for having led us in the novena to the Sacred Heart. Since then, I had not been available. I was on tour of the sub-region attending meetings of the Society of Jesus. So Father Nicholas Mubanga, thank you very much for leading the party. Be that as it may, the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass has ended. Let us go forth to spread the good news of our Lord by way of our lives.